Here we go. Good morning. Good morning. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Welcome to another virtual worship service here at Faith United Methodist Church. Thank you for uh, tuning in whatever day and time that you might be doing that. Um, the good news is that in a couple weeks we're going to be back together and I'll touch on that in just a minute. But I do want to thank you all for uh, joining us for this time of worship. A few calendar announcements for this upcoming week before we get going. Uh, first of all, tomorrow morning, of course, the, our PGA Golf Fellowship meets over at, at Meadow Oaks at 645. Again, that's open to anyone who would like to come out. You don't even have to be a, a member of the church or anything. Just show up and tell you, uh, let us know that you want to participate. Uh, we meet at 6.45, our tea times are somewhere around 7.30. Also, uh, keep in mind, we still have a group of people going to Bob Evans uh, for our fundraiser dinners on Monday evening. They get there around five o'clock. You're welcome to join them. Just make sure you take along one of the yellow sheets so they know to return uh, that portion back to our church. Tuesday, uh, there is a presidential primary uh, going on and uh, our covert hall is a voting center. So it will be busy around here, but not necessarily with church stuff as much as with the primary voting that's gonna be going on. Uh, Tuesday night though, we are going to be having an in-person finance committee meeting followed by an in-person ministry team meeting it's uh, time for us to start getting together and actually getting uh, ready for our annual charge conference. And in order to get ready for that, we need to uh, make sure that our budget is planned out for 2021. And also uh, we have a lot of things that we are still planning in the fall. And so the ministry team meeting will be discussing some of those things like pumpkin patch uh, Thursday at 8.30 is Coffee with the Pastor down at the Oasis. Uh, would love to have you come and join us out there. 
And also Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, our thrift store is open. Just a couple other things to uh, keep in mind. Two weeks from today, August 30th, we are planning on finally getting back together again in live face-to-face -face worship again. Obviously, we are going to do all the things that we were doing before in terms of screening when you come in and checking your names off and all of those things that we were doing in order to stay safe as we worship. Because we haven't been together for a while and because traditionally a fifth Sunday of the month is a single combined worship service, on August 30th, we'll have one single combined worship service, but it's gonna be at 9.30 a.m. So if you are an early service person, make sure that you make note of that so you get here a little bit later. If you're a late service person, make sure you make note of that so you get here a little bit earlier. Um, you don't need to be sitting around here for an hour waiting for service to begin. And of course, you don't wanna come late and miss the worship service. So uh, on your calendars now, right in 930 for August 30th. And that is gonna be a new member Sunday. I mentioned that before. And we have right now two people who are planning on uh, joining our church. And there is room for more. If you uh, be prior to all of this, if you had been coming to church for a while and you would like to go ahead and become a member of our church, uh, this is your second to the last opportunity. There's also a fifth Sunday, I think, in uh, November. So you'll have one more opportunity this year to uh, be able to become a full member of our church. I did mention Pumpkin Patch, and it's a couple months away, but it's time for us to really start planning. Our leadership team is all together, and they are willing to go ahead and lead uh, our uh, pumpkin patch effort and the pumpkins are scheduled to arrive not the first Saturday of October but second Saturday of October and um, it our pumpkin patch is our biggest fundraiser each year and it's pumpkin patch money that gets us through the following summer and so it's a very very important event that we really don't want to miss the concern right now with the leadership team is that we're going to have enough people who are going to be willing to come out and to work the patch. Now, keeping in mind, it's you're going to be working outside, under a tent, uh, safely distanced from anybody. You have no expectations of loading pumpkins. All you need to do is sit at the table and take the money. And we will make sure that we have hand sanitizers out there and gloves and anything else that you might need uh, while you're working the pumpkin patch. But we uh, are going to need a whole bunch of people that are willing to work that pumpkin patch. So uh, keep that in mind. And there will be a sign-up sheet out here on the 30th uh, when you come. And if you're not going to be coming to church for a little while, I would ask that you either give uh, Mark and Cheryl Victor a call or let the office know that you are willing to help out at the pumpkin patch and they will plug you in where you need to get plugged in. The other thing I want to mention to you is our golf tournament. Uh, we are supposed to have our golf tournament in May and it's been pushed back also to the middle of October. and. Uh, we are looking for players right now. We have some signs we still need to, uh, to sell, the signs are, are whole signs, and they cost $40. And uh, we're looking for golfers. Uh, we'd really like to have a nice uh, large group of golfers that are coming out to play. And also we are looking for gifts uh, for a silent auction. All of those things are also our fundraisers through the United Methodist Men uh, it contribute to the fundraising effort of the golf tournament and the United Methodist Men. So if you are a golfer and you want to play and you want to grab other people from other churches or friends, uh, please let Steve Bianco know 
If you would like to buy a sign, please let Steve Bianco know. He'll give you the details on that. And if you are willing to contribute some kind of a, a silent auction type of gift or put a gift basket together or something like that, again, please let Steve know. Uh, we need to really start getting the word out about that uh, at this point in time. Uh, those are major announcements. Our mission emphasis today is for our partnership with the Spirit of Stephen Project uh, with the Volunteer Way over at Moon Lake. And uh, they're providing bag lunches and other services for homeless and needy people. And as you can imagine, during this time, uh, they are probably uh, serving far more people than what they used to serve. And so uh, when you're sending in your donations this week, if you uh, designate anything for missions, it is going to go toward the volunteer way unless uh, you designate it otherwise. I mentioned the new member class coming up, and if the bulletin that Nancy emailed to you has uh, some food pantry needs and uh, some other things about the prayer list. And I believe that those are the announcements that we've got this morning. Again, thank you for uh, joining us uh, for worship. Let's continue to worship. Well, good morning. Let's uh, get started this morning as we continue worship, singing together, Open My Eyes That I May See. Open my eyes that I may see Glimpses of truth thou hast for me Place in my hands the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me. divine open my ears that I may hear voices of truth I'll send is clear and while the wave notes fall on my ear everything falls will disappear silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my ears, illumine me. Spirit divine, open my mouth and let me bear gladly the war truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare Love with thy children thus to share Silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see Open my heart, illumine me Divine. You at home may be seated. <laughs> I know I'll be happy when this virtual worship stuff is done. It's just very strange being up here with without you being out there, so I'm looking forward to when we're together again. We have a few updates to our prayer list this morning I'd like to share with you. Uh, David Hamby has requested prayer for Ethel and Joyce Hackett and the Holly family for comfort and wisdom 
uh, during some end of life decisions and care that they have to make. Bill Odom said that his wife Martha's recent blood test shows she's anemic. She's having more tests than a CT scan to be sure it's not a result of the spread of cancer that she's been treated for in recent years. Linda Bean said her husband Richard has been experiencing chest pains that have been attributed to actually a neurological problem, not a cardiac problem. He will be able to be treated with medication and all of his heart tests actually were good. Laura Smith sent an email saying that her cousin Andy was in a bad motorcycle accident in Kentucky, had surgery on August 7th to repair his spleen and broken ribs. Joanne Couture let us know that uh, their very close friend, Jim O'Malley, who's been uh, dealing with cancer for a long time, uh, finally uh, died just in this past week as a result of that cancer. And uh, we want to be lifting up uh, Joe and Joanne during this time. Joanne recently lost her sister, and now they've lost this good friend. So please be in prayer for uh, Joanne Couture and Joe as they um, go uh, through the stuff that they're going through. And also we want to extend Christian sympathy to Lynn Jacquette on the death of her cousin's husband, Jim Barber, uh, due to COVID. And uh, naturally we want to be remembering all of the folks that have been affected by COVID. We want to continue to lift up our first responders. You know, they don't advertise uh, the fact, but actually a number of our first responders have been infected with the virus. And uh, so it's caused them to be uh, isolated and whole shifts to have to be isolated, which is really putting a strain on, on uh, our sheriff's department and our uh, fire departments. And so uh, please keep all of our first responders in your prayers. and. Uh, of course, we want to continue to lift one another up as we go through this time. And our prayer is that uh, the folks in our church and our families will remain COVID-free. And if anyone uh, that is associated with us has gotten it, we want to be lifting them up for prayer also. That all being said, let's go to prayer. Father, thank you for the opportunity to once again come together. Uh, Lord, the sanctuary is pretty empty, and yet we know that you're present, and that's really what matters most. So thank you for your presence today as we have gathered for this time of worship and praise of you. And as we've gathered today, Lord, uh, we are reminded of the fact that uh, beyond the virus, other things continue to go on. Uh, we've heard about uh, people who have lost loved ones and are going through a time of grief at this point, Lord. Uh, we are aware that there are some people that we know that uh, are uh, in the hospital and uh, recovering from surgeries and uh, recovering from accidents, uh, as was mentioned, Lord. And of course, we know how widespread this virus is and how it's affected so many people in so many different ways, Lord. So many people have just contracted the illness and their symptoms vary from uh, very minor to uh, really very serious, Lord. And we also know that there are a number of people who have died as a result of catching the virus. And we know that our first responders are put at risk every time they uh, go out into public. Not only the risk of what they might find in terms of uh, uh, fire dangers, uh, violence, and other things like that, but on top of that, Lord, they have to be concerned about the virus in every place they go and everything that they do. And of course, Lord, we lift up our medical people who are on the front lines and they don't have any choices. They have to be there. They have to treat the folks that come in. And 
So we lift them all up to you today, Lord, and ask for your touch in each life and that you keep them safe from the virus, that you would just put a bubble around each one of them that will keep them safe as they go about doing what they need to do. We do lift up our congregation, the many people on our prayer list, Lord, we don't want to forget them. But we lift up our congregation and our families and ask that you protect us all from the virus and any among us who have gotten it, Lord, we would ask that you just touch and heal them quickly of it, Lord. And Lord, uh, we are looking forward to coming back together on August 30th. I'm excited about that, Lord. And it's my hope that when we come back together on the 30th, that you will truly bless us and it will be a glorious time of coming back together and a time in which we'll be able to come back uh, boldly and uh, without fear and be able to come back and to uh, be prepared to worship. So thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers this morning. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And we lift up the message that's forthcoming, believing it's come from you. So all of that, Lord, thank you again for all your many, many blessings. And thank you for the prayer you taught your disciples, say, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, Jennifer. Beautiful as always. Well, the virus has gone on for several months. But I have good news. That good news is it's not going to go on forever. Woohoo! <laughs> At some point in time, and we don't know when, but I truly believe the virus is going to be gone and uh, we're not going to have to walk around with masks anymore. And I think that we're going to return to some semblance of normal whenever that time comes. And that will include normal church activities. We'll be able to come together. We'll be able to have covered dish dinners again. Uh, we'll be able to do all those wonderful fellowship type things that we uh, have been doing, uh, get together with all of our, our Bible studies and other things, and that day will be coming. For people in churches around the world, this time in which we've been forced to be isolated, uh, some people may have seen that as kind of a time off from many things church. Now, of course, many, many people have begun to tune in to YouTube and other sources in order to actually uh, watch and participate in worship services from their homes, and that's wonderful. But beyond that, I think that a lot of people have seen this as kind of a vacation from the other responsibilities that we have as Christians, and we do have responsibilities as Christians, and there are times that we do have to take a little time off. But I believe that one of the effects of uh, this virus, and I mentioned to you an article I read, I think it was last Sunday, uh, talking about uh, an increase in spirituality of a bunch of people, that a lot of people, uh, a fairly large percentage, saw their uh, their faith getting stronger, and other people that hadn't really been spiritual are beginning to turn toward the Lord. And I think that that's going to be one of the legacies of uh, this virus, is I think that more people are going to be searching out God. And obviously the place for a lot of them to search out God is going to be in churches. And so that means that we who are already here when we get back together, it's going to be imperative that we are ready to fully get back together and to jump back into the individual ministries into which God has called us. And, um, you know, might have to do a little exercise and, and get the rust off and all of that in order to do it. But the fact of the matter is that even though we've had all of this time that seems like a time off, once we're back together again and everything begins to function normally again, each one of us has to be prepared to come back and to be reinvolved and, and uh, delve into the life of the church beyond Sunday. If you have uh, ever invited Christ in your life at any point in your lives, uh, you know that you have been gifted by the Holy Spirit for service. Now, when we're given other gifts, um, somebody hands us something as a gift, uh, a human gift, that can lay dormant for a long, long time. You know, somebody gives you a second blender, you already have a blender, and the second blender can stay in the box for years. But it's different when we're talking spiritual gifts because... Uh, when we're talking spiritual gifts, according to Scripture, if we don't use them, we are going to lose them. And Jesus highlighted this by telling a parable about a man who had three servants and man was going out of town. I'm going to share part of that parable because it's kind of a good news, bad news parable. So I figured that I would share the, the good news part of the parable this week and next week we're going to have part two and uh, we're going to hear the bad news part of the parable in part two. I've called it uh, use it or lose it uh, because that's basically what the the crux of this 
parable is that Jesus is telling. So like I said, we're, we're focusing on the good news first. The parable is found in Matthew 25, and I'm going to go from verse 14 to 17, then jump down to 19 to 23. For today, we'll look at different passages next week. So it says, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, to another one, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who received five talents went at once, put his money to work, gained five more. So also the one with two talents gained two more. Now we jump down to verse 19. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who received five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrust me with five talents. See, I've gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I've gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. And so ends the reading. So at the beginning, we hear there are three servants but out of three, two of them are productive. So we're just focusing uh, on that. Next week, we're going to hear about that unproductive uh, servant. So let's think about this story a little bit so we have a little bit better understanding. Now, a talent is basically an amount or a sum or a weight of money. And Jesus uses this symbolism just so people have some kind of an idea of what he's talking. But in reality here, when we apply it to uh, being a Christian, being a follower of Christ, we might uh, think of it in two ways. Uh, first of all, uh, spiritual gifts and responsibility to use those gifts. All right? So... Each one was given their things in proportion to their capabilities, which is really, really good news for all of us because the truth is that um, all of us are in different places when it comes to, to our Christian maturity. It doesn't matter what your age is, but it does matter what your Christian maturity is. So if you are a fairly new Christian, then what that means is that uh, God is going to entrust you with uh, maybe only a couple uh, spiritual gifts, but he also has an expectation for you to do only so much with those gifts. If you've been a Christian for a long time and you are mature uh, as a Christian, then uh, you may get more spiritual gifts. And on top of that, you will have more expectations from God as to what you're supposed to do with those spiritual gifts. So, uh, but in here, he uses this, this monetary term so the people hearing it can understand. So the master's expectations would be in line with uh, his perceived capabilities of each person. So in the same way, God's expectation of us uh, would be in line with what God understands our capabilities to be. And because each had different capabilities, expectations varied. But one thing that's common is that there's an expected increase from all of them. So it didn't really matter if they got just a couple talents or if they had a multitude of talents. The expectation of the master in this story would be that when he came back, that those talents would have been multiplied, increased to some degree. And in the same way, even though God's expectation of us will vary because of the fact that our Christian maturity is different and uh, our spiritual gifts uh, may be more in their infancy, 
the fact is that God still expects that we are going to be productive with the gifts and talents that we have been uh, given. So these two servants invested properly, re reaped a reward of doubling what they had. So again, we are supposed to take our spiritual gifts and we're supposed to accept the responsibilities that God has given to us. And we are supposed to put those gifts to service in such a way that the hope is that uh, the, the uh, number of Christians is going to increase, that the, the family of God is going to increase, that we are going to be able to use our gifts in such a way that people are going to be responsive to that and recognize that those gifts have come from God and therefore uh, will be drawn closer to God uh, as we are using our gifts and uh, our abilities. So when the master returned, he rewarded them with more in the future because they had proven worthy. So the master comes back and he says, well, uh, you've done such a great job with those five talents that I'm going to give you a whole bunch more in the future. And you've done so well with your two talents, I'm going to give you a whole bunch more in the future. Well, in the same way, as we are productive for God, as we are using our gifts uh, for his service, as time goes on, we are going to discover that our gifts are going to increase and they're going to get stronger. Uh, they may change a little bit, but they're going to increase. They're going to get stronger. But along with that comes a continued expectation that we're going to continue to use them. And so that's what this uh, parable is all about. And at the end, he invites them to share in his great joy. So in the end, uh, basically, uh, not only is the master saying, well, come and, and share my joy, but again, from uh, using this for our, our understanding right now, basically, in the end, we get to, when we get to the great white throne, we get to present uh, what we've done uh, for the Lord. And, and so the Lord will say, well done, good and faithful servants, come and and join me as we celebrate together. Well, so this story is told as a parable to help us understand what it means to be a productive follower of Christ. Keeping in mind, works never, ever, ever get us into heaven. However, according to James, James 2, Faith without works is dead. So we can claim, well, you know, I have faith in God. I have faith in Jesus Christ. But if there are no works to go with that, then basically it's a question of, do you really have faith or is this lip service? Is this some kind of fire insurance by saying, well, yes, I, I, I have faith in God. I'm not really going to do anything with that, but I have faith in God. So God understands the difference uh, between someone who says, I have faith, and someone who demonstrates his or her faith through the works that they do. So what does that mean uh, practically? I, I think it's always important for us to look practically at it. Well, Scripture uh, spells out many different gifts, and we're going to go over them. But keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list. This is uh, maybe the, the ones that uh, are most focused on, on serving God, but it's not exhaustive. But I want you to hear them and uh, think about which one, where do you fall into these gifts? So the list of gifts comes from 1 Corinthians 12 and also Ephesians 4. And so they're listed in no particular order. They're just listed. Well, the first thing that's listed is apostles. Well, apostles are considered to be delegates or envoys or messengers of God. Uh, keep in mind that 
when the disciples were with Jesus, that they were considered disciples, because disciple means learner. But at the same time, they didn't retain that, uh, that title, I guess, because they were actually sent out before uh, Jesus' death and resurrection. Uh, they were sent out into the world in order to use what they had learned. So there, we find the disciples being called disciples and apostles. Apostles basically means being sent out. Disciples means uh, being a learner. So some of the gifts that we might think about is we could be considered an apostle, someone who's kind of an envoy for, for God, a messenger of God, someone who goes out into the world in order to share Jesus with other people. Next one that's listed is prophets. Well, prophets are people who proclaim divine messages. Now, interesting that prophecy in scripture doesn't always mean foretelling the future. Uh, we think of prophecy as something that uh, somebody foretells what's going to happen sometime in the future. But actually prophecy in scripture quite often is just someone who shares a message from God. However, that person has received that message. Maybe that person has received a message because they are students of scripture and they read and they read and they read and um, then they proclaim basically what they read. Uh, I've got an uh, interesting uh, devotional book at home that uh, uh, it's a, a list of devotions of uh, Puritans from a long, long time ago. And I, I read one of the devotions, I think it was yesterday, and it was amazing because that Puritan who wrote what he wrote could be alive today and be talking about the situation in our world today, particularly our Western world today. So uh, someone who's a prophet is someone who uh, passes on a message from God, however that person has received that message. Um, teachers are, are one of the things that are listed, and these would be primarily teachers, scripture, uh, teachers of Scripture. And one of the things that teachers and uh, pastors are called to be are people who prepare the congregation for works of service. So uh, teachers are very, very important in uh, not only proclaiming what the word and explaining what the word might have to say, but at the same time for preparing the hearers for works of service. That's why I've talked so much through the years about uh, going to uh, Bible studies and being involved in those kinds of things because they're so very, very important. There are important truths that we can learn through being part of a Bible study and uh, that responsibility is put on the teachers to interpret and to express whatever those uh, truths might be. Another one is workers of miracles. Now, today, quite often, we don't think about the fact that miracles are going on, yet I believe that miracles happen all the time. Uh, sometimes, uh, many times, I think, uh, through the years that we've been here, we have prayed for people, and maybe there was a spot on a lung or something, and the next time they went to the doctor, the spot was gone. We have actually uh, witnessed miracles that have occurred here. and miracles come not just because God decides to grant a miracle, but miracles come because people are diligent about praying and expecting miracles. That's the thing about prayer. If we are praying and not expecting God to answer, then we might as well not be praying. If we are not praying, expecting the possibility that God might grant a miracle, then there's no sense in our, in our praying. So to me, when there talks about workers of miracle, to me what that's saying is that uh, we're talking about some powerful prayer people, people who are, are deep in prayer and whose prayers are very, very effective and who have 
uh, prayed for people, and then after that we have seen miracles occur. So workers of miracles still exist today, but I would classify them as uh, powerful prayer people, people who have been gifted with the ability to truly pray in such a way that God can hear and God can respond. The gifts of healing. I think that the gifts of healing can come in many different ways. I believe that uh, there have been people who have been able to lay hands on people and uh, they've been healed. I don't know that there's been very many of those, to be perfectly honest. But I think that also the gift of healing would apply to all of our doctors, all of our medical people. And God has given them such great skills and God has given them technology and medicines and everything else that healing still goes on today. And we have been blessed through the years because we have had several Christian doctors and uh, before they do whatever they need to do, they'll pray. And so before surgeries have occurred, they've prayed and they know that their power truly comes from God. It's not just that they are so skilled and such an, uh, so expert at what they do, but they understand that their gift of healing has come from God in the first place. Another one is helpers. Helpers are just that, people who help other people, people who help out at church, people who help out in a myriad of different ways, uh, people that work at, at food pantries, people that work at soup kitchens, uh, people that help uh, organize the church office. Uh, all of those are opportunities for help, uh, for being helpers, and I think that God has gifted many, many people for those things. They just have to figure out what it is in specific that uh, God has called them to do with that ability. Administration is another gift. Administration basically means uh, leadership and organization. And uh, there are some people that I just know, uh, they truly have been gifted in, in uh, leadership and organization skills. Uh, it, don't look at my desk because you'll question my organizational skills. But the fact of the matter is that there are some people that I think are truly, truly gifted in leadership and organizational skills. And if God has gifted you in that way, then maybe you need to find some place within the work of the church in which your gifts can be best used. Evangelist is one of them. An evangelist is basically a preacher. And uh, that's what they're called to do. And it's not that they're just simply a preacher because obviously there's a lot of preachers around. But evangelists, I believe, have been uh, gifted in such a way that when they preach, uh, God really works within them and through them. And as people are hearing, it's, uh, people will respond to what the preacher has to say because that preacher truly is representative of God. And we see uh, very gifted evangelists through the years, D.L. Moody and uh, John Wesley and so many others that were just gifted evangelists that could get up and preach and move huge crowds of people. Billy Graham, if you ever went to a Billy Graham crusade to uh, preach in front of those huge crowds and to see so many people uh, come and give their lives to Christ. Uh, so that's what evangelists are, are preachers. And then the last on the list basically is pa pastors. Well, pastors uh, were called to be shepherds, take care of the flock, take care of the sheep, and at the same time, again, just like teachers, to prepare people for works of service. So uh, the hope is that myself and every other pastor out there is doing what we can to take care of the flock, but at the same time that um, we are preparing everybody through our messages, through our teaching, through our leading, as to, um, uh, to be prepared to do works of service for the Lord. 
So these uh, represent kind of major categories of gifts, but I've told you that this list is not exhaustive. Uh, if there was an exhaustive list, there'd be a, a whole chapter devoted to nothing but listing uh, spiritual gifts. But I thought of a couple more that weren't on this list that I think are very, very important. Uh, musicians and singers, uh, God has blessed so many people with such great talent, and some of those folks are using that to the best of their ability. I just so appreciate uh, Jennifer and George and, and everyone else who participates in our music program here uh, because God has gifted them in such a way that they're able to come and they're able to use that gift on a, a weekly basis and possibly even more than that. But I think that uh, being a musician or a singer surely is uh, a spiritual gift and to see someone who is using those gifts in God's service is wonderful. I think people who work with their hands also are gifted by God and they can be, uh, they can use that ability to God's service. Uh, the first church I went to, uh, they didn't have a kneeler. I thought that that was kind of interesting. Uh, they didn't have a kneeler, so if there was a wedding and a uh, bride and groom wanted to take communion, which is always an option, uh, we didn't have a, a portable kneeler at all. And if you look in the catalogs, a very basic kneeler was very, very expensive. So I knew that there was an older gentleman in our church that was an excellent woodworker. And I showed a picture to him, and I said, can you make one of these? And I gave him the basic dimensions, and I just let him do it. Uh, sometime later, I don't remember how it was, he called me and he says, well, it's all done. And I have to tell you, it was the most beautiful kneeler. The one that was in the catalog was very, very basic, but he had just made this kneeler so very, very beautiful. And he created it with his hands, and he gave it as a gift to the church. And so he truly took that gift that he had and uh, created this beautiful needle with his hands, presented it to the church, and it still sits at that church today. And it's one of those things that'll probably last forever. Artists. Uh, artists cover the full realm, don't they? People who paint, people who draw, people who dance. Uh, so it, art comes in so many different ways and uh, through the years I have uh, been aware of so many different artistic pe uh, people. Uh, I, I wish that I was artistic. Uh, I, I'm lucky to be able to draw a stick figure, but I wish I was artistic because I really am not. And I admire so many people who are artistic in so many different ways. And also, I would add visitors to the list. People who feel comfortable visiting other people, that's such a great gift because not everybody has it. Some people are very shy. Uh, some people are very self-conscious. They don't know what to say. They don't know how to say it. Uh, when they meet people that they don't know, they're uncertain about what to say and do. But there are some people that just are gifted so very well that uh, they could be introduced to someone who's brand they've never met before and in a matter of moments create just a beautiful relationship with that person. And uh, so being a visitor and having that gift is an amazing thing. So the, this is just an addendum and, and again, it still certainly doesn't cover anything. But the point is, that God has blessed all of us who know him with one or more spiritual gifts. And he has brought us all together in this church because each one is needed as part of this body of Christ in the world. And so you may think, well, um, I, I do a little, I, I write poems. Well. Writing poems might be a beautiful thing to be able to share with other people. 
So it doesn't matter how you regard your gift or your abilities or your talents, what really matters is that you're willing to use them in the service of the Lord. I really have never believed that anyone is in this church by chance. I believe that God has placed each person here on purpose for the purpose of being part of the body of Christ because a body is not complete if there are pieces missing. However, though the Spirit has gifted us, we also have the ability to quench the power of the Spirit and to ignore His leading. That's the whole idea of free will. So in spite of the fact that uh, we, we chose for Jesus Christ, we chose to follow Him, we chose to invite Him into our lives, we also have the ability, once we're filled with the Holy Spirit, to pretty much ignore the prodding of the Holy Spirit. And so when that happens, we become the unproductive guy that we're going to be talking about from the same parable uh, next week. So one other thing that interferes with the work of the Spirit, though, is allowing the devil access to our selfishness, our anger, our resentment, our discontent, distraction from God, and love of the world. When we allow the devil a foothold in any of these areas in our life, it disrupts our ability to serve the Lord and to allow the Spirit to fully flow through us and to guide and lead us. And yet... Uh, any of those chinks in that armor that we're supposed to put on every morning, the devil is going to take uh, advantage of. And the devil is going to try to increase our, our anger and our selfishness and all of those things. And that is going to hinder us from being able to serve the Lord as we uh, are called to. If we are willing to use our talents, the good news is two things, that we're going to be entrusted with more, and that's good news, but the other thing is that when all is said and done, and there we are at that great white throne judgment, we'll be able to just lay all those things at the feet of Jesus and hear Jesus say to us, well done, O good and faithful service. Come and enjoy your master's joy. And that's just going to be a marvelous, marvelous thing. So I hope that you are going to be preparing yourself because when we're coming back, we need everybody to jump in with both feet and uh, to shake off the rust, shake off the dust, and, and get ready to come back and uh, be prepared to jump in and serve the Lord again. And uh, next week, we're going to hear about that unproductive servant and the consequences of not using those gifts. Let's pray. Father, thank you for reminding us that uh, God has gifted us. And God is generous in his gifting, Lord. And we thank you so much for that. And it doesn't matter how long we have been Christians. It doesn't matter what our age is. That God has gifted us. Uh, in accordance with our capabilities, Lord, we thank you for that. And yet we understand that there's an expectation that goes along with that, that it's, we're not to just accept those gifts and do nothing with them, Lord. So help us to prepare our hearts for uh, the day that we're going to be able to be back together and be able to fully uh, use those gifts once more, Lord, as we prepare to come back and do what we can to serve you and fulfill the calling that you've put in each of our lives. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we close this morning, uh, let's join together singing, Take My Life and Let It Be.
once again, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's my hope that you are blessed and uh, we'll be virtual one more week. And then after that, we will be joining together again in live worship. I'm looking forward to that. In the meantime, hear the benediction. Now may God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be with you today. May he give you his love, his peace, and his joy. And as you encounter other people as you're coming and going, may you share that love and joy with all you encounter. And may you know God's peace that passes all understanding. Amen. <laughs>